This is definitely not the kind of place I'd set an outpost. Hello. I am satisfied to see that you survived your most recent sleep cycle. Taking time to chat. I. I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation, and it's given me a lot to think about. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a list of requests, things I would normally handle if I was there. <sighs> but I'm not. I'm out here instead with you. You're not keeping me out here. I am. Just... Here, let me explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps, until the UC decided to axe the department. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Some more than others. You see... The top brass demanded press-worthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. Oh, like hell I can't. You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination, so I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed, 
because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. If I had fought harder, I'm convinced our division may have had a chance to prove its value. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Well, that brings us to this message now, doesn't it? Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> it's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority, but all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Mateo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh, here you are trying to help me and I'm yelling at you. <sighs> you have to understand. Once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have feelings for me. It's just... I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you. It's me. I'm just not ready to get that close. I can't. Not now. But thank you for being there and listening. It helped. It really did. certainty to the universe at all. Once you really start getting out there, the laws of physics kind of turn into suggestions. You're pulling my leg again, right? No exaggerations this time. Hmm. Thing. Unicorn. Not kidding. What? The mythical mare with the magic horn thing? Come on. Was King Arthur riding on it too? Okay, it was more of an extremophile in the vague shape of a horse. But my point still stands, you need an open mind. You go into the far reaches of space too tightly wound, the brain is just gonna pop like a soda can. Found me. I wish I could say this is the first time this has happened with Barrett, but well, it isn't. Well, this is turning into a regular constellation party, isn't it? I should have brought drinks. You know, it's actually been kind of nice. Matsura the Grim here is a great host. Have you reconsidered paying the ransom for Barrett? To letting me go. We do have some insurance set aside for this exact problem. Does that mean you'll be paying me, Miss? We don't need to be introduced. Here's your money. 
And we would appreciate it if you could spread the word in the Crimson Fleet that Barrett shouldn't be harassed. It's not working out for any of us. That's a fair point. But I can't control a man's reputation. Do what you can. A suggestion to the right ears can work wonders. Hmm. Very well. Goodbye to you all. I have enjoyed this little exchange. See you around, Metzer. Uh, I mean, well, you know, hopefully not. You're liking the boss is so generous. Every time I return here, I'm reminded of the importance of Constellation's contributions to exploration. Sorry for the wait, everyone. Got a little held up on Vectera. Barrett, we were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. 
don't start, country. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library show. Now, look at them all. You feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, I had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I I'm still not a hundred percent, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around, help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? Marvelous. You've got something for me? I know everyone's excited by the artifacts, but we need to be as objective as possible and be aware of Ask possible if you've got questions. Effects. Speak up if you have ideas. We're all here for the same reason. Here, I got this for you. I had almost forgotten I picked it up for you. Anyway, I figured you might have a use for it. It's not a problem. If I see anything on our next expedition to a planet, then I'll hang on to it for you. What's new? Should I be nervous? <laughs> go on, go on. Let's see. I've been in Constellation for a long time, as you know. I enjoy cheese, mm -hmm. my work, and long walks on unexplored planets. <laughs> what else did you want to know about? I think about it a lot. There's so many possibilities. Some wonderful, some terrifying. I'm not a fearful man, but I am just a man. And I'm keenly aware that this artifact could change my life. Or end it. On Bendy? No, wait. It was Kazal. Uh, I can feel Lynn's admonishing stare boring a hole in my back. She's not actually standing behind me, is she? Well, point is, my story's probably a lot like yours. We dug a pit, found some really wonky readings. Follow them to the artifact. Well, he certainly means something, because not everyone who touches the artifacts sees them. My first instinct was it was a message of some kind, like the Voyager records. Communication from a higher life form reaching out blindly into space. But now I'm wondering if the vision wasn't just sensory. My new theory is something's changed in us physiologically. As in, not just a message from beyond, but a delivery. Well, when I picked it up, I had no idea what it was. I knew it was something spectacular, though. I saw a vision, flashing lights, the whole shebang. Sure, like what? Always a pleasure. Well, okay then. Can I help? It's always a good day when we get to chat. Of course, Captain. I was raised in Hope Town on Polvo. It's a corporate town run by Ron Hope, the CEO of Hope Tech Manufacturing. He likes to sell it as a utopia, a place where workers are provided everything they need for a happy life. But that's a lie. The conditions are awful for the average person in Hopetown. Almost everyone there lives hand to mouth. I agree. It was awful to grow up around so much suffering. I know more people would leave if they could, but Hope Tech's wages are so low that almost no one can afford it. That's why I joined the Freestar Rangers. I knew they'd fly me to Aquila for training, and I wanted to do something more meaningful with my life than building starships. 
I thought being a ranger would be a perfect fit. But it didn't turn out like I was expecting. Boarding the ship to leave Hope Town might be the best thing that happened to me while I was a deputy. No apology needed, huh? It's not your fault. For all that working with the Rangers wasn't for me, I still learned a lot. It was eye-opening to see how people live all over the Freestar Collective. I thought the conditions in Hope Town were unique, but leaving Polvo showed me I was wrong about that. The longer I spent with the Rangers, the more I started to feel like they served the Freestar Collective's government more than its citizens. I couldn't make peace with the fact that an organization that claimed to stand for freedom and individuality let places like Hope Town exist. Eventually, the hypocrisy was too much. I made the decision to resign and move to the UC. Seemed like people there might share more of my views. There's a reason the United Colonies and the Freestar Collective have never quite seen eye to eye. They do things very differently. The UC provides services like healthcare and job placement for its citizens. Those kind of things don't exist in the Freestar Collective. My opinions about the government's responsibility to its citizens seem to fit better with the UC's way of doing things. I'm sorry, Captain, but I disagree. They could be doing better. Especially in Neon. It showed me that Ron Hope's attitude isn't unique. The Freestar Collective is full of people willing to take advantage of others to get what they want. And there are barely any systems in place to stop them. No one to tell them no or punish them for it. That's the downside of the Freestar way of doing things, huh? No social safety nets. It's hard for anyone born into poverty to improve their situation, especially with people like Ron Hope and Benjamin Bayou in power. He's the administrator of Neon. He basically owns the city. I like to say that not a credit gets spent on Volai Alpha that doesn't end up in Bayou's pocket. I feel sorry for anyone who has to grow up there. Povo was bad, but at least we didn't have violent gangs. You're not alone. Most free stars aren't very good at introspection. I took plenty of flack for criticizing the Rangers before I left the Free Star Collective behind. I thought I did at first. New Atlantis is clean and safe, and most of the people there are happy. And it seemed like the government was doing a lot to keep it that way. But my perspective changed after I took an entry-level job with UC Security. They stationed me in the well. I couldn't believe the conditions down there. It made all the UC talk of a perfect society seem like propaganda. The more I started looking around, the more cracks I saw in the whole thing. Their treatment of the soul system to begin with. It's one of humanity's greatest treasures. 
and they've let it fall into total disarray. The UC's insistence on maintaining a large and well-equipped military is also a bit off-putting. If they're committed to intergalactic peace, why do they need it? Those are the kinds of questions you almost never hear UC citizens ask. I think that comes down to good marketing on Mast's part. It all seems just a little bit too shiny when you really start to look closely, huh? I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks so. Once the wool fell from my eyes, living in New Atlantis lost its luster. That's when I decided life in the major factions wasn't for me. The problems run too deep. There's corruption and division everywhere, and not enough people are willing to see it. I don't think that will change anytime soon. It seems to me like the only option is starting over, huh? Founding a colony without the influence of massive governments and corporations. Maybe... Maybe people would be kinder to each other in a place like that. I've always tried to see the best in people. I really believe that the average person wants what's best for everyone around them. I think without the influence of big governments and greedy corporations, people will treat each other better. You read my mind, Captain. You're really getting to know me, huh? I've been thinking about the idea of founding my own settlement for a while. It isn't in my nature to sit around while the problems in the settled systems get worse. But I'm not rushing into anything. If I'm really going to do this, I need to get a better sense of how people live all over the settled systems. That means visiting the major cities and looking at both the good things and the bad. That way, I can decide what things I want to keep and what I am going to leave behind. Good thing I'm working for a captain that likes to travel, huh? We'll hit all the major cities in no time. I appreciate it. And don't you worry. I won't let this distract me from my normal duties. You're still the boss. Need me to do anything else? So... I hear you've been making yourself pretty useful around the ship, Cora. I have, Dad. Yes. I want to be as good a co-pilot for the captain as I am for you. Well, you're doing a great job, String Bean. I'm proud of you. What do you say we get you a new outfit next time we're planet side? It still fits, Dad. And I love it. Now, a new book?
ecosystem has its own unique challenge. I swear they were just here. Need it now. I just wanted to say thanks for the daring rescue back there. I had plans for Matsura, of course, but I appreciate the backup. It's good to be part of a team, isn't it? To be part of something so much bigger than any one of us. So many things can go wrong out there. Working with people you can trust is important. That's why I've been in Constellation so long. It's good to have people who will help out when you're in a jam. Exactly as often as I need to. Jams are just sticky successes, right? At first it seems annoying, but it eventually washes off. Uh, just wait till we get matching shirts and start having official cookie days. Sounds amazing, right? Reminds me of a time when I got stranded on a ship carrying tons of frozen foods when its engine and gravity system died in the middle of nowhere. The captain allowed everybody to eat only the cookies since the meats were so expensive. But with no gravity, the cookies baked into weird little spheres. So naturally, we floated around eating cookie gobs for days. I'd say we gained quite a lot of weight. But as we were in space, uh, we actually did not. I'm guessing gourmet chunks days are out of the question then. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just joking. Constellation is so much more than that. Speaking of which, I'm glad you joined Constellation. Neither do I. Yet I muster forth. You know, being a member of Constellation has given me a lot of opportunities. 
and a fair bit of stress, I'll admit. It's hard to imagine just who I'd be had I never joined up. I would have never done so many things, met so many people. It's mind-boggling how different I would be. And I never would have met Irvin. Or lost him, I suppose. It's not you, Captain. It's just been on my mind. I can't say why. Irvin's been gone for over 20 years. Strange how memories can pop up when you least expect it. Oh, I've been giving myself nothing but space and time <laughs> for years. But maybe it's time for me to really think about it. Well, maybe I'll take you up on that offer later on, Captain. I need some time to think about things. On that note, I think I'd do well to distract myself with a little adventure for a bit. <laughs> <laughs>